So welcome everyone. Uh, we are running yet another CNC webinar, the CNCF uh, series of uh, cloud native webinars. And today we have um, we have an amazing uh, topic regarding deployment strategies on Kubernetes that's going to be presented by Etienne Tremel, who is a software engineer at Container Solutions. Uh, my name is Sihor Dvoretsky. I'm a developer advocate at uh, CNCF and I'm going to moderate this webinar and together with me, Caitlin Bernard, who is an integrated marketing specialist at CNCF, who will help us with, uh, with, the, modera, uh, with the webinar moderation. So, uh, Etienne, are you ready to start? Yes, I'm ready. Can you hear me, uh, Salam Kia? Yep. Yep, all good. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for uh, joining tonight, uh, well tonight in, uh, in Amsterdam at least, uh, and thanks for the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation for uh, having me. Uh, so my name is Etienne Trevel, I'm a software engineer here at uh, Container Solutions. Um, the company is helping um, other companies to migrate uh, their infrastructure to the cloud uh, and try to help them to adopt the cloud native attitude. Um, so recently I've been working, uh, well, I've been working on many uh, different types of infrastructure and uh, recently I've been focusing on Kubernetes. So today uh, we are going to uh, talk about deployment strategy on Kubernetes um, and here it is uh, the agenda. Uh, so a quick overview of uh, what Kubernetes is. Um, then I'm going to list six different strategies for each strategies I'm going to um, to show you how, how, uh, how it's working and uh, give a little example, uh, list the pro and cons of each strategy, and then I'm uh, gonna go for a sum up. So let's start with Kubernetes. So um, as you may know, Kubernetes, uh, so it's including a deployment. Um, so deployment resource is some kind of object uh, that control a replica set and uh, the replica set is uh, a resource that can control pods and, uh, and then to access these pods these instances uh, you have services um, so as you can see on the screen um, uh, on, on the right part of the screen for example you have two different cap, uh, kind of replica set uh, the one in blue is uh, the version one, for example, and then you have the one in green, which is going to be the version two. And when you deploy an application, uh, the pods are going to be created in a different way. And this is uh, what we call uh, uh, deployment strategy. So it can be like recreate uh, one after the other one, etc. So I'm going to list them uh, later on. Um, if you want something a little bit more complex uh, for the routing, you can use ingress. Uh, so ingress is uh, making use of an ingress controller like N Nginx, uh, HF proxy, traffic, Istio, and others. And what it does is um, you will access uh, the cluster through the controller, and then the controller is going to dispatch traffic depending on the host or on the path to uh, other services. And the services, pass through uh, the pod. So how does that work? Configuration wise, uh, so Kubernetes is uh, heavily uh, working with YAML files. Um, on the left part of the screen, you should be able to see the deployment configuration. Uh, the deployment configuration is, um, can, can be split in three different parts. Uh, the deployment, then you have the replica set. So the replica set is managed by uh, the deployment. And then you have the pod. And in the pod, uh, you have the containers. So just a quick reminder, uh, a replica set um, is some kind of controller that, allow you, uh, that, that is going to control how many pods are going to run and uh, trying to make sure that there is at least the minimum amount of pod that you have uh, on the screen where it said replica three. Uh, so it will take care of uh, keeping it up. And if one fail, it will uh, restart the pod. Um, in Kubernetes, everything works uh, with labels. So as you can see, for example, the replica set is a matching pod that have the label app Nginx. The services uh, on the middle of the screen uh, also target 
uh, all the pods that have uh, the label app equal nginx and the same thing for uh, the ingress but at the higher level so you're gonna have your service name uh, so if for example someone access a domain uh, the application through the domain uh, food.bar.com then want to access slash foo the request is going to go through uh, the service name my service and then uh, from the my service going to target uh, the, all the pod that have the label app engineering. So, so uh, now that we have a little bit of more understanding about uh, all configuration work, uh, which is basic uh, for development strategy, um, I'm going to uh, present each of these strategies. Uh, there's six of them that I've been listing. Uh, two of them, the recreate and run, are uh, two strategies that are native to Kubernetes, so you don't need any step, uh, any uh, extra step or uh, extra tool, uh, tool like um, uh, Istio uh, to have more features around it. Um, the blue-green deployment on the Canary, uh, it can be done uh, like the native way without any extra tool, but uh, you have extra step to have it working right. And then A-B testing and shadow deployment are a bit more complex uh, and to have it working uh, properly to deploy your application, you're gonna need to uh, add extra tool to uh, your cluster. So all, uh, all the things that are going to see in this presentation is listed in uh, a Git uh, repository uh, called k 8 deployment strategies I invite you uh, to check it out. Uh, there is everything listed there. There is a step-by-step -step how to deploy um, and how to use all these strategies. So the first one is recreate. So the recreate deployment, um, a user is going to access a service in your cluster. The, the request is going to one uh, pool of instances uh, called in this case V1, the version one of your application. Then uh, we are going to shut down the instance, the instance uh, start it again, and when it's ready, uh, we are going to transfer the traffic to the version two. So here it's just a very dumb way of doing a deployment. So you shut down, shut, uh, shut down, start uh, the instance again on, uh, with a new version, and uh, here you are. So the problem with this one is you are going to have downtime. Huh? So it's, it's, it's quite um, special, and it, it's not very used at uh, it's not something that you will use all the time. Um, so how do you do this? Uh, so in your deployment, you have uh, a few fields uh, on a field that is called strategy. So this is uh, where you define what kind of deployment you want to do. On, as I was mentioning before, you have two types of deployment that are native to Kubernetes, which is recreate and run. And uh, you can define it this way. So if you want to choose the recreate deployment, then you're going to write type recreate. And then to apply the new version of your deployment, you're going to do a kubectl apply on the new manifest. So of course, I'm not, uh, I'm not mentioning it here, uh, but I assume that everybody knows that when you have a deployment, a first application, um, inside, inside your, your deployment, you define the version of your container. So if you want to deploy a secondary version of your application, the next version, then you define a new tag. And uh, the next time you are going to apply it, Kubernetes is going to make sure to recreate all the pods on replica set. Well, the replica set that is going to create the new pods one after the other one with a new version. Um, so if we look at uh, the pattern of the traffic during the release, uh, you can see here that version one represented in green uh, get some traffic and then uh, because we shut down the machine there is no traffic anymore for a little amount of time so the service is unavailable and then version 2 is uh, started again on uh, is ready to access tra accept, accept traffic and, uh, and that's what we get so this is this pattern so the problem with this uh, deployment, um, well, let's, let's start with the pro. Uh, it's very easy to set up. As you can see, uh, there is only one field to change in your deployment on uh, set the type recreate. Uh, the cons of this one is that there is a very high impact on the user. And of course, you have downtime. 
on the downtime uh, depends on uh, both the shutdown and boot duration of the application. So if your application is very fast to boot, then it's gonna be very uh, short, the downtime, and if it's uh, a little bit longer, then it's gonna take more time. The next one on the list is called RAMT. Uh, it's also known as incremental or rolling update. Uh, so the name that is used in Kubernetes is rolling update. Um, so uh, yeah, you can call it both, I guess. Um, so how does that work? You have a user accessing version one through a service. Uh, then we start spinning up one instance of the new version wait that it is ready, and then we can send traffic, and then we kill uh, the previous instance of version one on the other pool of code, uh, start a new one of the version two, send traffic when it's ready, remove uh, another one from V1, et cetera. So this is, uh, uh, so, so, so you, you would deploy your application one after the other one, right? one pod after the other one. So it's like your, a slow rollout of your application, um, on the way you would uh, configure it, uh, it's a little bit different than the other one. So you, you, you change the type rolling update, but uh, you have some extra uh, parameters that allow you to define how many pods you can add an extra to the amount of pod that you have already in your application, and what is the maximum, maximum uh, amount of pod that can be unavailable. So most of the time, you will do something like this, uh, max unavailable zero, so we want to keep the amount of pod minimum, and we only want to have um, we, we want to have two pods in maximum uh, every time um, uh, to, during the running update. Um, for these two values, so here it's it's integers, right? It's two or zero. Uh, you can also define a percentage. So if you have auto scaling in place, uh, then it, it, it can be quite handy. Um, the run deployment, so the rolling update, um, is the one that is mostly and widely used everywhere uh, on, on the very simple tool to set up. If you look at the traffic shape, um, it could look like this. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's, it's a ramp, so that's why it's called ramp. And uh, we can see that there is a very slow rollout, so we, we deploy version two slowly, so version two is represented here in uh, yellow again, and then version two is going on uh, until all the traffic, uh, like until you have 100% of the traffic. And version one is slowly uh, terminated. For this deployment, uh, it is also very easy to use. Um, you just have to set the field type equal uh, rolling update. Um, the good thing is that it's doing a version, the version is slowly released across instances. Um, and then it's also convenient for stateful application that can handle ongoing rebalancing of the data. So I put it in there, uh, but what I mean by this is um, when you have, uh, for example, uh, some, some kind of state in your application, um, while your, your other application is, while the new release is, um, is spinning up on the side, you want to have a little bit of time to uh, synchronize, all, synchronize all the data, and then you can terminate the previous one, right? Um, the problem with this one is that the rollout can take some time, uh, and it depends on the amount of pod, that, amount of replica on the pods that you are going to have for uh, this application that you want to, uh, to update. And there is absolutely no traffic over uh, control over the traffic. Next, the blue green deployment. Uh, it's also known as a red black. Uh, red black that comes from uh, Spinnaker. So this is uh, um, the delivery, delivery software uh, from Spinnaker uh, from Netflix. Uh, the blue green deployment is working as follows. So you have a user accessing an application. V1 in this case, uh, through a service, and then uh, you spin up your new version on the side, um, wait that everything is ready, and when everything is ready, then you can switch uh, the traffic on version two, this way. 
Uh, how would you do that? So uh, the way you do a green, a blue green deployment. Um, so in this case, I'm showing for a single service. Later on, I'm going to show for multiple services. Um, you have in your service, you have a field called selector. The selector field allow you to map uh, all the incoming requests uh, um, on, on, on transfer them to the pod, uh, which means that like, if your service match app, my app, which is the name of the application on version 1.0.0, all the requests coming to this service are going to go to uh, all the pod that have the label app, my app, on the version 1.0.0. So when you do this, um, on the side, uh, you are going to apply your change. So as you can see uh, in, um, in, in the box, uh, highlighted box on the bottom right corner of the screen, uh, I'm doing a kubectl apply dash f of the manifest version 2. Um, so I'm releasing the new application on the side of version 1. So the problem with this is that it's going to use a lot of resources um, because you need double capacity of your infrastructure. Um, and then you do, when everything is ready, when, when your application is ready to accept traffic, you make a switch. So you do a kubectl patch on the service and you say, hey, I want a version to match version two instead of version one. And then if you think that everything is fine, you can safely deset uh, the previous deployment, um, or you can keep it up and running over there and, uh, and do a rollback in case there is uh, some issue detected. Um, the blue-green deployment is uh, mostly used, well, one of the reasons that we'll use this one is, um, is for a front-end application. Uh, so a front-end application is you are going to serve some HTML. In the HTML, there is some assets, so CSS or uh, JavaScript. The time you are going to uh, make a request to your application, you're going to have, well, during an update, right? Um, if you make a request to an application, uh, the time that you, you receive the content uh, on, on that your browser pass your HTML, uh, on ask to, 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 to load the assets on the server. If in the meantime you have a change in a the version, then it's not going to, to work correctly, right? So in such scenario, you would use uh, a blue-green deployment uh, to, to, to control this. Um, if you want to do it with multiple services, so you can do it, of course. Uh, so in this, in this uh, screen, I'm showing like you have uh, an application called Login and uh, on the side, an application called cart. Um, in this scenario, I'm appending the version in the name. On uh, what we do, we use ingress. And in the ingress, uh, you, you just apply the new version there. So the way you will do it, you apply, you, you spin up your application on the side like you will do uh, with a single service, right? So all your services with a new version. And then when everything is ready, uh, you apply the change at the ingress level. So you, you map all the service name, login v2, card v2, um, to, to match the new version. And then when everything is fine, you can safely uh, delete the version one that is already running on the cluster. The pattern of the traffic um, will look like this. Uh, so we do a switch, right? So we switch from version one to version two. Uh, this is instantly, instantly. Um, so as you can see, yeah, you, you have a big, uh, like a big change in the color, right? It's not like the ramped deployment. Um, so the good thing with uh, the blue green deployment is uh, the rollout is instant uh, on the rollback as well. So it, it's very quick. Um, on, if you are using ingress with multiple services, all the services are going to be updated at once. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, it's a very good fit for the front-end applications uh, that load version assets from the same server. Um, <laughs> it's also a dirty way to fix application dependency L. So if, for example, uh, you have a few applications running in one cluster, each application depends on each other. Uh, this is this is a way that you could fix the deployment. So instead of releasing one application and another one, and then you don't really know how to do it, this could be a way, but it's not uh, suggested, right? Um, and then cons of this one, uh, it's quite expensive uh, because you require double the resources. 
uh, and then you need to have proper testing in place. Uh, so you need to test your platform with unit testing, integration testing, etc. Uh, and this should be done before releasing to production. Uh, well, you can still roll back, of course, uh, but uh, there is some impact on the customer. And, uh, you, you want to be able like, to have something that is working out of the box. Uh, yeah. Next on the line, you have the shadow deployment, um, which is uh, the latest one in this list. It's also called mirror or dark. Uh, it's a funny name, uh, but what does that mean? So you are going to have a user accessing a version one on the application, and then you are going to release version two of your application on the side, like this. Um, you wait until everything, everything is ready, and then you can send traffic to it. Oh, sorry, there's a mistake here. Ah. <laughs> this is not the shadow deployment, this is a canary deployment. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's go with the canary. <laughs> Uh, wrong uh, explanation here. Yeah. So canary is a bit different. Uh, the canary is, I'm gonna change that, huh? by the way. Uh, so we have a user accessing uh, a service through a load balancer. Um, uh, on, on what it does is uh, you spin up your application on the side um, and then you can define, okay, I want 90% of the traffic to go to version one and 10% uh, of the traffic going to version two. So this is a very safe way to deploy an application. That means you do, um, you, you test your application, well, you could test your application with live traffic and, uh, and look for failure. And then the, the good thing with this is that you are doing it on a very little subset of users. So if there is a failure, uh, you can quickly roll back and it's only a little part, a little bit, uh, a little part of the user that are uh, impacted uh, with a failure. And then when everything is fine, you can uh, roll out everything with 100% of the traffic. So the problem with the canary deployment is that you're gonna need to have uh, extra tooling if you want to have it uh, like precisely defined and locked. So I will explain it in a bit. Um, so here, the canary deployment. Uh, so we start with two deployment, my app v1 and uh, my app v2. Uh, on my app v1, at first, I have 10 replica, uh, and then I, uh, I send traffic uh, from the service, and I match all the pods that have the app, uh, my app. Uh, later on, you can deploy a version two at the same time, um, and set the replica to zero. <laughs> and uh, what you will do, at some point is uh, you are going to scale down slowly uh, uh, version one and scale up uh, version two uh, whenever you think it is right. So in this way, um, so that's what I was explaining a little bit before, uh, part of the traffic is going to end in version two and most of the part is going to, to, to end up in version one. So, the way that I'm describing here that you are seeing, it's uh, the poor man's way of doing a canary deployment uh, because the, the, the spread of the traffic is going to be um, uh, defined by the amount of pod that you have in your application. So for example, here we have nine pod running version one, one pod running version two. So it's gonna be 90%, 10%, right? Um, if you want something a little bit more precise in terms of uh, traffic distribution, uh, you could use Istio, uh, Istio which is a service mesh and, uh, that is very popular uh, these days. Uh, still not production ready, I think, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Uh, well, I never used it in production. Uh, maybe some other people can tell you more about this. Um, so the way you would des uh, describe it is uh, you have uh, a resource called root rule. Um, and, and then you define how much weight you want uh, on, on a specific version and uh, the weight on the secondary version. So in this case, we have 90% of traffic going to version one, 10% of traffic going to version two. Um, 
but uh, you don't need to have 10 pods of version one uh, on uh, two pods on version two or something like this. Uh, it's whatever the amount of pods that you have, it's going to correctly dispatch the traffic. So it's, yeah, it's very precise. Uh, the shape of the traffic, so the pattern uh, during the release would uh, look like this. Um, so when you release it, uh, you just, um, release the application to a subset of users. So in this case, it is 10%. Um, you, you leave the, the version there for some time. And if you think that there is no failure undetected, or if you think that this is good to go in a, like to roll out everything, um, then later on, you, you add 100% of traffic on version two, and you can safely uh, delete uh, version one. Uh, Canary is um, it's very nice because it's you, you are doing like uh, you test your application on a subset of users. So there is if there is some 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 problem with your application, uh, only a little part is impacted. Um, this is very convenient for uh, error rate and performance monitoring. Um, if you want to roll back, it can be fast. Uh, because it's only a few pods that you need to roll back. You don't need to roll back the full infrastructure. Um, the problem with this is uh, it can be a little bit slow because you need to wait some time, right? If you want to detect failure or if you want to test if the new version of the, uh, the new release has been um, successful uh, in a way. Uh, if, uh, yeah, you, you might require to have st sticky sessions. Um, so why sticky session? So it's something that, uh, yeah, I would not recommend as well, huh? but uh, if, if someone, a user access uh, your application, uh, one version or the other one, you want to uh, keep your user on this specific version. Um, so you don't want to have the user going, oh, I, one of the requests went on version one of the application and on the second request that the user asks, uh, it's going to version two. Uh, sometimes you can have some mismatch, so to, to, to to fix this, you would use sticky sessions, but yeah, uh, this is something that is not suggested to do. Um, if you want to have a very precise way uh, to shift traffic among, amongst all the versions, uh, you would use a different tool uh, like Istio or uh, Linkerd, uh, which uh, is, doing, uh, is going to take care of load balancing. Um, A-B testing, so A-B testing, um, so I listed the strategy here, uh, there's only one reason of this, it's because uh, it's still very uh, widely appreciated by uh, the business. <laughs> um, so A-B testing is, is mostly used by, uh, by the marketing, uh, so if, if you want, um, to release a new version, uh, you want to test the conversion. Uh, if there is an improvement in the conversion, uh, for example, if you are running um, uh, a store, um, you want to, to, to test uh, on a specific set of users that uh, the new version is working better than another one. And if it is, then you can release a new version there. But if it's not, then you don't want to impact too many people, so you, uh, you, don't, uh, you, you put it on the side. Um, so how does that work? So you have a user uh, here represented with a, a desktop or laptop uh, application that goes to version one. And then on the other side, uh, you want to match um, another type of user, the person that is using a mobile, for example, and you want to match them um, to access version two of the application. So there is a few things that you can uh, filter on uh, your users. So you can use geolocalization, language, cookie, user agent. Um, so all these parameters that come from uh, the request on the header. Uh, then you can filter out some people and uh, bring them and drive them on the version that you want them to, to access. So in, in, in this scenario here that I'm presenting, uh, the users that are using a mobile phone are uh, going to access version two or the version, the mobile version of your website on uh, the other user is going to access the desktop version of your uh, website. 
uh, the way you will do A-B testing, uh, so in such case, uh, you need to use Istio uh, or another like a system that can allow you to do this in a precise way. Um, in this example, uh, there is something called root rule. So this is the same thing that's presented before um, with, uh, I think it was blue, no, it was uh, A-B testing. Uh, no, A-B testing, it was what? Um, I forgot, canary. <laughs> Um, so in, in, in such case, um, we match a request, uh, something in a request, which is called headers. On, uh, so everybody that is, well, all the applications that are going to send, for example, the header X API version, uh, when it's going to match version 1.0, then we uh, send the, the traffic to version 1. And if uh, the X API version is version 2, then we send to uh, the secondary version. So it can be quite useful uh, to fix API versioning. Uh, so it's not only uh, for the business uh, to be used, right? To, 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 to look at conversion. Um, it's, a it's also used um, uh, for inside your cluster to, to talk between application. You can do it this way, right? If you want to release a new application, a, a, new, uh, a new API uh, that contains breaking change, um, then you can match uh, all the requests uh, to the appropriate version that you want. Uh, if you look at the pattern, uh, it's not totally correct here, uh, but you have version one that is having most of the traffic and then uh, version two having a little bit less traffic. But it is represented this way because we match a subset of users, right? So it, it cannot be green everywhere or yellow. Uh, A-B testing, the good thing is that you can have several versions running in parallel. Um, for example, you can uh, run a version for a specific country uh, and another version for another country, another country, etc. So you can create like a custom website uh, or API uh, and serve different content depending on the country of the user. Um, with this, you have complete uh, control over the traffic distribution. Um, so you can very like, yeah, you can do almost everything, I would say. Um, and it is a great tool uh, that can be used by the, by the business uh, to improve conversion. So if you are running um, uh, um, a store a website, uh, then this is, this, is, this is pretty nice to use. Uh, the problem with this is that it requires an intelligent load balancer, uh, like Istio or Linkerd. Um, so by using intelligent load balancer, you need to take care of um, putting it in place, updating it, etc. So it's a little bit more work, um, but it can be beneficial depending on your requirement. Um, one other thing that I, I noticed is uh, when you use such a tool, it can be very hard to troubleshoot. Um, why? Because you have some requests coming to your cluster. Um, on, on, on some time it's going to fail. You don't really know why. So you, you, you have to, to bring some extra tooling around this. On, 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 uh, these toolings need to be able to, te to, to help you to, um, to troubleshoot. So something that you could use is uh, tracing. So uh, like this, you can tell, okay, uh, this request come uh, from um, this application. Uh, and then going to this uh, other application on another application, then you can troubleshoot the entire uh, journey of the request. Um, on the next one, so the shadow. <laughs> so uh, previous slide was wrong. Yeah? The shadow deployment is uh, the last one that I'm going to present here. It's also called a mirror on dark. Um, on the way it works, so you spin up your application version one, uh, and then on the side, you are going to release version two. But um, you are going to send traffic to it without impacting uh, the user. So what it does is it's, uh, we split the traffic uh, from the user and you send the same traffic on version one and version two, but only version one is received by, us by the user. And uh, by doing so, uh, you can test on scale your application and on on, on see if, it, if it's performant. Um, without 
impacting anybody, right? So it, it, it's really nice. Um, the problem with this is that you need double size of your infrastructure because you are going to have two versions running together and you're going to need to have some mocking system because if your application rely on dependencies like uh, a database, uh, you don't want to have any insert, update, delete on your database uh, from the application running version two. Otherwise, okay, you can double the data. So you need mocking. Uh, and then when everything is fine, you roll out uh, version two. Uh, how will you do this? So again, uh, yeah, people will think that I'm uh, an Istio fanboy, uh, which I am maybe. <laughs> uh, but this is this is a very easy way. So they have a very nice way to describe uh, how you want to um, to shape your request when you want to where you want to request to go. And if you do shadow deployment, you would use uh, a field called mirror, uh, and it's going to um, to split your traffic from one version to another one. Uh, the only thing that you have to be careful is uh, you need to add um, uh, the labels. So version one is going to receive 100% of the traffic and version two only zero. So all the things that I've been describing in these slides are available on GitHub. So you can, you can check it out. You have all this example. Huh? So uh, that's why I'm not explaining too in deep. Um, and if you look at uh, the pattern, uh, so it would look like this. So you have uh, the traffic going in, which is going to version one, and the rest, uh, while it's shadow. So it's just a little line uh, to represent um, uh, just like that we are receiving traffic, but not, not doing anything with it. So the point comes on this one. Um, you do a performance testing of your application with pollution traffic, which is very nice. There is no impact on the user. Um, and you decide whenever you want to roll out. And then if you think that uh, the performance of the application is good enough, then you can roll it out or not. Uh, so, so you, in a way, you will use a shadow deployment if uh, performance is very important. Um, and you don't want to, from one release to another one, to lose performance. Uh, um, so, so, so if you have an increase in latency or something like this, uh, then you, you just like say, no, we don't want to release this application, and then uh, someone can work on this to improve. Um, problem with this is that it's quite complex to set up. Um, as I was mentioning before, it's re very expensive since you need double capacity. Um, it's not a true user test and can be misleading in some case uh, because, because you need mocking, right? So uh, because you need mocking, the data that is going to be received uh, is going to be instantly, maybe, uh, except if you had some latency, uh, random latency in your request. Um, so yeah. It depends, of course, of your requirement. Uh, but this one, I, so in, in my case, I never used it in production. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's too complex in some way. So, so it really depends. If you have a lot of time, then uh, go for this one because this is, yeah, this is live traffic testing, but on the side. So this is quite amazing. Um, to sum up, um, if you use a recreate, uh, well, you, you will use a recreate if uh, downtime is not a problem. Um, personally, I've never been using it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I would see some scenario, for example, if you need to keep, uh, I don't know, maybe a host name to be the same host name, then you will use this one because it's recreating uh, after the other one is shut down, after the, the previous pod is shut down. Uh, recreate and run uh, deployment are both native to Kubernetes. You don't need any extra tool to do it and no extra step. Um, run on blue screen, on blue green is uh, usually a good fit for everyone to use. Um, the blue green, if you want my advice, just use it for um, when you have some problem with dependencies, uh, then you would use blue green. Um, on, on, on blue green or shadow, huh? it, it, yeah, it, it's quite expensive. So, yeah, if you have budgets, why not, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, my, my favorite here is, is still uh, the RAM deployment or uh, the canary if 
if you're not too sure. So yeah, uh, canary on A-B testing um, is mainly used when you have uh, not too much confidence over uh, the quality of the release. So if, if you're not, yeah, if, if you didn't test correctly or if you just, some, some people test right in production, right? So you, you can do it. Uh, then you would use canary. Like, like this, you, you do it at a very subset of users. Um, and then canary A-B testing on shadow uh, require um, some extra components in your cluster. So to finish, um, we created uh, at Container Solutions this uh, little uh, diagram. So it's kind of a decision uh, table, uh, which you could use if you uh, are not sure which technology, uh, which deployment you could uh, adopt for your Redis um, pipeline. Um, this one is available on the GitHub repository as well. So uh, if you want to, to use it, just go there, share it. Um, it's, 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 um, it's very useful. It can be useful for some. And uh, next on the line, uh, if you want to play around, so that's what I was mentioning before, we created uh, a, um, a repository uh, with each uh, of these deployment uh, strategy listed there on the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use it. Um, we have been using Minikube, so you can do it on your own laptop. You don't need a cluster uh, running somewhere, which is quite convenient. And um, yeah, you can check out some of the blog uh, that have been uh, writing on that part of me about this. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks again uh, for uh, watching this webinar. Um, thanks for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation for having me tonight. Um, so now I guess we can go to uh, the Q&A, maybe? Yep. And Katien, uh, so we are ready for your questions. We have a few extra minutes before our slot will close. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions about the deployment strategies on Kubernetes or related topics or anything else that is uh, close related to our topic of the webinar today, feel free to ask your questions right now. Anyone? So I can see that someone has a question, but it's something re not related to um, uh, to, uh, to the deployment strategy. It's more related to the slides. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the slides are going to be available on uh, Slack Share or slide, slide Deck or something like this, right? Or should we keep it on uh, Google? Yeah, uh, so answering this question, uh, uh, the webinar recording and the slides will be available on cncv.io website on cncv.io slash community slash recorded events. So you'll be able to find them um, really fast. Uh, we, have, um, we have an extra question, or the technical question regarding the current topic. So uh, to what extent does Pinarker support the strategies presented? It's the question by John. Yeah, um, so unfortunately, I don't have too much experience with Spinnaker. Um, the only thing I know is, uh, so at first, Spinnaker was made for uh, releasing, uh, was not made for releasing in Kubernetes. And uh, what they did is uh, they just adapted uh, Spinnaker to make it work on Kubernetes. Um, I'm not sure about the strategies that they are using there, but I guess uh, all the native one on the blue-green de deployment should be uh, available, uh, I guess. But yeah, I, it's pretty difficult for me to, uh, uh, to talk about it since I, have been, I haven't been using it. Um, I guess if you, if you go on the Spinnaker website, you should be able to see it. Ah, yes, and uh, Jamie just shared uh, a link. So one of my colleagues, uh, Thais, uh, did a very nice blog post about Spinnaker, so you can check it out um, on the Container Solutions website. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, we have a few extra questions. Yeah. So first of all, can this work with CI? Yes, so uh, yes. So what I, I presented in this presentation is, um, you work with a kubectl command, right? Uh, so kubectl command can be used everywhere in your CI system at any moment. Um, so if you have a little bit of scripting around it, then you can just do a kubectl apply on your deployment and it's going to be uh, 
uh, release to your cluster. But still, um, I would suggest uh, using maybe Helm, uh, Helm, which is a packet manager from Kubernetes. Uh, it's doing exactly the same thing, but it's um, that, that you will do with Kubernetes, but it, it has some very nice features. <laughs> Um, and you could do all the deployments that have been listing there uh, with Helm, uh, but yeah, you, you still need some scripting around it, so it's not straightforward, I guess. <laughs> but if you if you follow the steps that are described in the GitHub repository, then you will you, you will see it's not that difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope this answers the question. Uh, uh Yes, so we have we have a question about the uh, is too maturity. So if you can cover this, it would be great. It's yeah. not, this webinar is not really targeting is too, but if you yeah. are aware and, and can cover so, this, it would be great. So yeah, I, I have been playing a little bit with is too. Um, I I didn't use it in production, uh, but I had some feedback from other companies uh, running it. Well, I attempted to use it, and apparently there was some issue. Um, I would say wait a little bit, <laughs> uh, or, or ask ask on the on the Istio well uh, to the Istio community uh, if they can give you some some feedback around it. Um, yeah, or give it a try. See see if it fits <laughs> at a very low scale. Yep. Uh, perfect. Just, just from our just from our perspective, I'd like to mention that this tier is mature enough and uh, yeah. there are enough customers and enough companies that are currently using it. Uh, at the same time, the uh, the current milestone is still uh, zero dot uh, five, as far as I remember. So it's not it's not one dot zero yet, but they're targeting this milestone really soon. So please stay tuned for the first announcement from this tier community. Um, coming to the next questions, uh, could you please give another example for shared deployments? Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what kind of example um, you're looking for. I, I, I guess shadow deployment it, it's mainly for performance reason that you will use it. Um, so to, in your CI CD system, for example, you, you release an application and uh, you want to make sure that you are not decreasing the performance of your application. Um, then you will do a shadow deployment and monitor all the performance are going uh, on this application. Or if it's not right, uh, then you stop the deployment. Well, you, you don't release the application at all. Um, I'm sure there is maybe other scenario why you will use this. Um, but yeah, this is a very complex uh, system to put in place. So yeah. I uh, I don't have anything in mind uh, other, other than the performance. So. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so, what is the good deployment strategy for a not front end application but a data service or a database? Yeah. So uh, this is a very complex subject. Um, you have many ways to to do it. Um, I mentioned before that, well, depending on, of course, the database that you are using, um, the, the, the best uh, scenario that you could get is having some kind of rebalancing system. So when you release uh, a new database version, um, you need to make sure that when a new pod is spin up, so I, I would use a ramp to deployment, uh, which is going to do it one after the other one. And um, so you, you need to, to rebalance, right? So you need to wait that uh, the rebalancing has been done and then you can go to the next pod. So if you do, are doing it at scale, that would be, uh, yeah, the best one to, to use. Yep. Um, and as a question that you have partially answered about Helm, so there's a question, is there any reason in this webinar we didn't see in Helm for deployment? Yes, uh, so Helm is um, it's kind of an abstraction, right? <laughs> so, so since it's, 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 it's just like, well, it's not just a template engine, of course. Uh, you can do dependencies, um, it's very powerful. But I, I have seen something somewhere on GitHub, I guess, that uh, they are going to, to improve Helm uh, on, on make all this, well, at least the canary deployment possible, but I'm, I'm still not sure. Um, 
Yeah, Helm, Helm is a bit different, right? So it's, yeah, you, you could do exactly the same thing that I've been explaining uh, on, uh, with, with a Helm command in a way. Um, but uh, yes, I, I guess it's a very good question. Um, I actually started working a few weeks ago on, um, on, 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 on creating this example with Helm. Uh, so since you're asking, I guess I'm gonna just uh, put it there in the re repository at some point this week or next week. And like this, we'll be able to, to play around them. And um, yes, uh, while I'm we are talking about Helm. Uh, I've been developing a plugin um, recently, which is called Helm Monitoring, uh, Helm Monitor. And uh, what it does is during your deployment, you can uh, uh, query some, uh, some instance like Prometheus or uh, Kibana for logging, uh, Elasticsearch, sorry. And based on, um, on, on, on the query, so if, if there's a detection of the failure, then uh, it's going to take care of rolling back automatically your Helm release. So I uh, suggest you to uh, give it a shot. Uh, I think it should be in the Container Solutions um, GitHub repository, or you can find a plugin in uh, the Helm plugin page on GitHub somewhere. Perfect. Um, and yet another question. Um, so is there any possibilities where can we integrate K8, I suppose there's Kubernetes with F5 or A10 load balancer for deployment? Mm. Mysterious question. Um, yeah, for, th for this one, I will not know. I never used F5. Um, or A10, yeah. Maybe you know, Yao? Oh, um, no, well. <laughs> I hope that someday we'll have the dedicated webinar sessions to cover these topics with more details. Yeah, this is, uh, this is something that is uh, yeah. complex. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So uh, another question is, uh, since we are all a little of subject between Eastern traffic, what would you choose? And uh, yep. um, so, so Istio on traffic are uh, something completely different. Um, I will associate traffic as just a regular load balancer like Nginx. Um, so, so when you use it in uh, Kubernetes, you would, it's creating a controller, right? Um, and well, it's two as well, actually. Um, yeah. It depends. I, I really like Istio. Uh, I think Istio has some very, very good uh, features inside uh, that traffic doesn't have. Um, traffic can, yeah, no, just go Istio. <laughs> this is hard to answer this kind of questions because uh, I don't have, I didn't use Istio in production, I used traffic, uh, but if you are, you are saying that this is mature enough that just use Istio, it's very really cool. Um, but I guess this will be some question for my, 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 my colleague that is uh, working on Istio and is going to provide um, uh, uh, some talk about it. I, I guess maybe a webinar at, uh, at CNCF. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so, so. always open. <laughs> yes. Uh, so why create is creating all infra components in different direction like? Uh, like Helmo Ingress. And how Kubernetes fits into existing infrastructure tool sets. Ah, yes. Um, so I'm not sure to understand the question here. So you, the thing is, Ingress uh, is part of Kubernetes, and Helm is uh, just a wrapper around um, like, the, like Kubernetes management, like the Kubectl CLI in a way. Um, it's just a superset of this. Yeah, I would suggest just just use Helm uh, to release all these components that you need in your um, in your cluster, uh, since it's quite powerful and you have the community behind it is um, quite active. Uh, and, and I have this feeling that Helm is becoming the the, the, the tool that is used by most of the people uh, to, to 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 deploy applications. Uh, on Kubernetes, um, 
but yeah, you have to understand how Kubernetes is working and then you can maybe move to Helm, even if, if Helm is uh, an easy way uh, to, to, to play around the uh, Kubernetes. I think you can define it as different role, right? You have the, the Kubernetes operator that is going to take care of all the configuration and then you have the Helm uh, user that is just like someone that wants to use uh, all the Kubernetes features, uh, but without having too much to, to go deep into the configuration. Yep. Perfect. Uh, and we have the final question because we almost ran out of time. So is it possible to have combined deployment strategy for, for example, Shadow plus Scanner or, or Lace? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, of course, you, everything is possible. Um, since you are using Istio, the way you will do it, I guess, is uh, you just change the root rule uh, that you have on your um, that you have defined to access the, the services. Um, so instead of doing a mirror, you apply a new rule with uh, the weights that you want, uh, and that, that would work perfectly. Um, yeah, and the next question is, is there any possibilities where Kubernetes can promise scalability and elast elasticity like Marathon? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Kubernetes is really scalable. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's actually more the question out of scope of our today's webinar, and we have unfortunately ran out of time. Uh, okay. But uh, thank you, Tian, for showing this great presentation and answering for almost 15 minutes for, for the audience questions. And thank you everyone for attending this webinar. I'd like to remind you that recording and slides will be available on cncf.io website. And we also uh, have uh, extra new webinar, yet another webinar on every new week. So feel free to uh, check our schedule, or subscribe on CNCF Twitter to receive the latest notifications. Um, thank you everyone for joining and hope to see you next time. Thank you all.